Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanted to make a yap session to talk to you guys about Rafinha. I wanted to make an appreciation post for Rafinha because this guy is truly one of the most undervalued players at Barcelona currently. I saw the stat today that really propelled me into making this video and the stat says this, only five players have had 10 plus goals and 10 plus assists in the same season for Barcelona in the last 10 seasons. Messi did it seven times, obviously the GOAT. Suarez did it five times. Neymar did it two times. Rafinha's done it twice and obviously he's only been at Barca for two seasons and Antoine Griezmann did it once. Those first three names are three of the greatest players in the history of Barcelona. And Antoine Griezmann, again, he wasn't great at Barca, but still, he's one of the best players of this generation. And Rafinha is in that conversation. And I feel like Barca fans are so quick, and I said this yesterday in my post-match app session, to want to get rid of Rafinha, but you guys truly don't understand the gem that we have on our hands. Rafinha has shown the potential over the past couple months that he can be one of the most productive and best wingers in world football. I mean, the guy's numbers are insane. He's an output machine and output matters in football, whether you guys like it or not, whether you like, you know, a stat watching is one thing, okay? I understand that people just go and stat watch and they don't actually watch the games, but you guys know, man, I watch Barca play. I mean, it's the one team that I don't miss a single game, obviously because it's my club, but I've seen every game that Rafinha has played at Barcelona. And I can tell you last season, yes. Was he the best player ever? No, but he also was, was good. And this season, at the start, yes, he was really inconsistent. He got injured, obviously. And then since he's come back from injury, I mean, the player that I felt the worst for after that PSG exit was Rafinha because he's the one player who really gave it his all through two legs. He was playing fucking right back at one point uh, in, the, in the second leg because Barca were so depleted, obviously, with the Araujo red card. And this guy never complains. Can play right wing, can play left wing. Obviously, every, everybody said Rafinha's not a left winger. He's been playing left wing since like the second leg of the Napoli game or the first leg of the Napoli game. I forget which one because obviously Lamine has the, right hand, has the spot on the right wing and he hasn't complained. He's done an excellent job. He's done an excellent job. And I think that Rafinha is a guy who we should have with this club for the foreseeable future because he's still young. And like I said, he's extremely not even promising anymore. He's shown you that he has those capabilities. It's not a what if anymore. It's not like, oh, if he, if he can become this. No, we know what he can become. And I think next season, and Barca can back this guy and actually show that, you know, we like you, man. We want you to stay. That, that's, that, that, I feel like Barca have this shitty way of just like not instilling confidence in players or at least in the right players. And, you know, what they've done to Roque is one thing, but there were reports that came out that apparently Barca are looking, like, you know, they're shopping Rafinha, they're looking at offers, and Rafinha apparently doesn't have, a, doesn't have an agent, so if anything that happens to Rafinha, it's got to go through him, like, they're not going to be able to t speak to a third party or somebody, like, representing him, he's going to have to, like, hear from the club himself, from Chavi, from Joana Porta, from Deco, like, hey, bro, we got this offer from Saudi, we want you to leave, but... That to me is not, like, that's not in my realm of thought. I think the best Barca that we can get next season, like, if we want to see Barca get back to the best version of themselves, that has to show with Rafinha being on that team. And that's obviously not the only thing that has to happen, but that is one of the major things that has to happen. If we want to actually contend for the UCL and obviously La Liga and win trophies next year, because this guy is a workhorse. And I, I know people talk about, you know, Nico Williams. I'm really excited to see Nico Williams. And I saw this post yesterday that who would you rather have, Nico Williams or Rafinha? It's not even like, it's, that's like apples and oranges. It's not even this close to the same player. They provide totally different things. And we can have them both. But people talk about, oh, Gabriel Martinelli for Rafinha swap. Look, man, I love Martinelli. I think he has a lot of potential. This season, he's been subpar. And that's me being nice. I mean, he's been, Trussard has been much better than him. And I don't know why we would go out and get Martinelli. Like, why, why would we do that? When we know that this guy, and he actually loves the club. You can tell this guy really, really loves Barcelona. And it's hard not to love Barcelona because obviously it's one of the greatest clubs of all time. And these kids obviously grew up seeing, you know, Rafinha is obviously Brazilian. He saw Ronaldinho play for Barca. He probably watched Neymar, not probably, he definitely watched Neymar play for Barca. And these guys, you know, they want to aspire to become that because Barca has a great lineage of Brazilian talents. Going back to Rivaldo and Romario and all these greats that have played for Barca who are obviously Brazilian. And Dani Alves, of course, who's a scumbag off the pitch, but on the pitch, he's one of the greatest of all time. So Barca have them, and obviously the king, Arthur, and, and, and <laughs> Arthur, obviously, and um, who, else, who else was the other guy that played for Barca? I'm forgetting his name, bro. Uh, I'm forgetting his name, but hey, Malcolm, that's who it was, fucking Malcolm, who was so, so shit for us. But anyway, man, I wanted to make this post, like I said, it's not going to be a very long video, but just to appreciate Rafinha and to tell you guys, Barca fans, do not take this guy for granted. Really don't take this guy for granted because what we've seen over the past couple months is really not normal. And when you look at Rafinha over the past couple months, he's been our most productive attacker. He really has been. I mean, who's really in the conversation with him? I love Lamin Jamal, but he's not been nearly as productive as Rafinha. And the only reason why we won that first leg at the Park the Prince and we came out of that game with a W and we obviously were feeling good going to the second leg was because of this guy. And then when he doing the second leg, he followed up with scoring another goal. 
And, you know, he's always in the right position. He's making things happen. Yes, he can be really frustrating to watch at times. But to be honest with you guys, every single player, apart from Gundogan maybe and Pedri on the Barca team, can be really frustrating to watch at times. I mean, there's times that I watch fucking uh, Araujo and I want to rip his fucking head off because he, he does the stupidest shit. Same with Ter Stegen, same with Lewandowski. Even with Lamine Jamal, who actually had a couple stinkers, you know, obviously he played amazing in my opinion, but, you know, he still has those young guy, young kid lapses that obviously guys like Rafinha are not going to have because he's a lot older, but still, he still has those every now and then. Rafinha is still a guy who can, who can make you, who, who is just infuriating to watch. But I'm so confused as to why we want to get rid of Rafinha, but we, we think our backup plan is Ferran Torres. And the same thing with Victor Roque. Maybe Xavi has something against Brazilians or Barca, you know, I don't know what it is, but you're so eager to want to get rid of Roque, but you're sticking with Lewandowski. I mean, that doesn't make sense to me. It really does not make sense to me. I think we're, we're putting our priorities and our trust in the wrong players, to be completely honest with you guys. And I really, I said this as a guy who loves this team truly from the bottom of my heart. And it hurts me to see because these guys, like, there should be no, like, after the season that Rafinha had, what else can he do? I mean, he's, I just read you guys that thing, by the way, like the 10 goals, 10 assists. I mean, that is insane, bro. That, that is not, that is not to be taken for granted. So for me, I was really happy when Rafinha came over for, from Leeds. If you guys watch my TikTok, you know I've backed this guy throughout the whole season. Last year, I backed him throughout the whole year when Barcelona won the league. I thought he was severely underrated for Barcelona. And I thought in that Clásico game when Barcelona basically pseudo won the league when Kessie scored that goal, he was fantastic in that game. And you could tell how passionate he was when Barcelona won the league. He was running up and down the pitch. He was so happy. Obviously, um, in this year, he's been amazing as well, in my opinion. I, like I said, he's had his ups and downs. But for the, for, for the important part of Barca season, this is one of the few guys that actually came to play. This is one of the few guys that actually came to play. You know what? One thing about Chavi, I, I, I appreciate Chavi for actually starting him and giving him the chance. But, you know, for me, it's just I don't want to hear about us shopping Rafinha because to me, that's stupid. It's nonsensical to shop a guy like this because he would get snatched up. And you could obviously garner a good fee for Rafinha. I mean, he, he would, you could get like probably 50, 60, 70, maybe 80 million for Rafinha because he's still only 27 years old. But this guy, to me, man, every time I watch him play, I just, I, 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 I he's, a, he's a Barcelona player. He is truly a Barcelona player, and I hope that this guy stays at the club for the foreseeable future. And I hope we don't sell him because I don't, that would honestly break my heart. And it, it makes me feel like, you know, what can a player do if Rafinha hasn't earned like the, like the trust of the coaching staff and hasn't earned staying at Barca for one more year? Then who has this year? Apart from like I said, Gundogan, who has who has who has who has, who has, who's earned it? You cannot sell Rafinha, man. You keep this guy, and again, I feel like Barca's parties are in the wrong places because this is a guy who, who you don't build around Rafinha, obviously, because he's not the type of player, and he's still, he's very, he's older now, he's 27, but this is a guy who you can 100% count on every single week to give you maximum effort. Maximum effort every single week. You're never going to see Rafinha walking on the pitch. Yes, he pouts when he comes off the pitch sometimes because he's pissed, he's getting subbed off. Every player does that. Every great, a great player wants to play 90 minutes. Rafinha is no different than that. But this is a guy who's always going to give you his all. Like I said, can be infuriating to watch. But this guy, when you want him to track back, he can track back. When you want him to make something happen and pick up the ball in, in midfield, he can do that. If you need to play different positions, he can play different positions. He's not going to complain. So for me, if I'm looking at Barca's winger options next year, obviously we need a winger. Whether that's Nico Williams, who I would be stoked if we got Nico Williams. Or whether that's you bring back Ansu Fati or Ferran Torres. Or you want to bring back Joao Felix on loan. One of those guys, to me, has to go. Whether it's Joao Felix on loan or maybe you're going to sell Ansu Fati. Or maybe you're not going to get Nico Williams. And you just bring back the same core. But you bring back Ansu Fati, obviously. And, and you just don't sign anybody else. But to me, one of the guys that has to be on that team. That has to be boring red and blue next year is Rafinha. And, you know, he, 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 to me, I think the best, like, I, I did my Barca ideal starting 11. My ideal front three was Rafinha, Vitor Roque, and Lamin Jamal. That's obviously never going to happen because Roque is going to leave probably, and Rafinha might very well leave as well. He also has, by the way, one of the best minutes per assist ratio in all of Europe. One of the best minutes per assist ratio. I saw that stat today on, on, on TikTok, I'm pretty sure someone pointed that out. And the, other only, the, the only other player that's ahead of him on that, in that stat is KDB, who missed half of the season. Who missed half of the season. Rafinha's played, like I said, he missed like a month and a half, but he's played the majority of the season. He has like one of the best assists per uh, minute ratios in Europe, which is insane. So to me, again, like I said, keep Rafinha. This video ended up being actually kind of long, but I didn't expect it to be. But anyway, I just wanted to come on here and talk about him. And yeah, let me know what you guys think about Rafinha. Do you guys think we should keep him? Do you guys think we should sell him? Let me know your thoughts about the Brazilian down below because I honestly, I love the guy and I want to see him. And I think he's, I just want to see him at Barca next year. But yeah, you guys let me know what you think. I appreciate you all for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace out.